just received three scriptures in the first service. These scriptures I got was uh, Hebrews 12 verse 11 and Romans 12 verse 11 and uh, Revelation 12 verse 11. I said, Lord, <coughs> what, uh, what do you want to say? Praise the Lord. He helped me and I, He's going to help us now again in Jesus' name. What is God's prophetic word even for today? He was drawn to this eleven. Now, no chasing, that's discipline, seems to be joyful, pleasant for the present. Is it pleasant for the present? Pleasant for the present. Okay. No words. But painful. Whoa! Not pleasant for the present, but painful. Must we say that? One, two, three. Pleasant for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields a peace. Oh, here we go, another peace. Peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Everybody say trained. Trained. I believe what is God saying to us. When we allow God's discipline on our lives, at that moment it can be painful, but if we persevere and we practice, that means you keep on, keep on, keep on, more and more to make the right decisions, to have the right attitude, the right opinion about someone, not to easily be offended, not, be, not to be oversensitive. It's going to become more natural, natural, natural to walk into that. You know, naturally we can get angry. It's, it's very easy. You don't need to discipline yourself to choose to get angry. Who had to do that before? You come and pray for all of us. <laughs> but when you are walking in the Spirit, in so many ways, you take the discipline from the Holy Spirit and it doesn't seem pleasant. So that means it's like a woe within you. But you put your flesh, you put your own thoughts, your own emotions, your own way of seeing things under the discipline of God because you respect His hand on your life. Amen. 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 So that at the end of the day, there is a peaceful, he says, a peaceable and peaceful fruit of righteousness. What is this righteousness? It's the stature of Christ. So that you are coming from a place of victory. And in this place, victory is there. <sighs> Everybody say, <sighs> that's a place of victory. Where I'm walking as an overcomer, and it's coming in a natural way. But for that, I must push for that to become a lifestyle. Before I gave my life to Christ, I knew exactly how every swear word can be used for every sentence that I said. So when I gave my life to Christ, I even <clears throat> had some swear words that was <clears throat> part of my testimony. So in the first week, I would say, it's very important to serve the Lord. You must leave all your work behind and Stop your prayer. And after one week, one lady came to me and said, What do you think God is thinking about that testimony? She put some discipline on me. Painful at the moment, I realized, Hey, I must be excited, but I mustn't be, what's the good word for stupid? Unwise. Yeah, not wise. I was supposed to be wise. Hello? And I had to change. And when I put the discipline, every time that the thought would come for that, what happened for a few years, when I said, no church, no Bible, ah, it doesn't work really. And I had to put the discipline until it became a natural. Hello. And so you put the discipline on yourself when you walk out there. Start to pray in tongues. Hello. We are in a place and we're walking from the one office to the next office. It happened to me in that way that, and then I'm, it just became part of my life to pray in tongues. And by the time I went to the next office, what I wanted to do, I didn't do anything. I did something else. It just happened that God changed. Because with praying in tongues and praying, you are aligning your soul. You are aligning yourself with what is in your spirit. Where when you pray in tongues, you are accurate. 
and you're going with your soul into wrong directions, maybe, but from your spirit you are accurate. You don't know what you pray, but still, God will use you. Amen. 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 Put the discipline from your spirit there. Put it on your lips. Bring accuracy on your lips through praying in tongues. Hello? And then that which will come from your mind through your mouth will become accurate. If it's coming from your spirit through your mouth, from your spirit through your mouth, it's accurate. Then what is from your soul to your mouth will become accurate. It will become accurate. Are you with me? But now then sometimes the source is not our spirit. Sometimes it's a different source. And if I choose to take the discipline from that spirit of bitterness, from rejection, from negativity, from depression, and I voice that and I honor that, so it will become. I will start to have stature in depression. I will start to have stature in negativity. Stature in criticism. Stature in being oversensitive to things that happen around me. Stature in things must be like this. One, two, three, four, five. And if it doesn't work like that, fruit of the Spirit one side. The one, two, three, four, five and the Spirit from the law of the Spirit. There's a law of the Spirit of life. And there's a law of some other thing that I can decide. I live by that law. Hello? Where there's no grace that for some reason, in some other way in my heart or in my mind, I can hold the fear. I will not do it like that. But there's some fight, some justification, some right thing, or somebody that offended you, somebody that this, somebody that that. And who gave you that right? To take up a stature that is not in Christ. Because stature is Righteousness. I have the right. But you only have one right. This right is in Christ Jesus. He is my righteousness. And I become the righteousness of God in Him. That's the only place for stature and righteousness. Are you with me? What is around you is a right from the Father. A right, first of all, to be a child. That's the biggest, awesome right you need to have. Honor. The right to be a child of God. And in that, God gives you the right to use the name of Christ. The right to come into His presence. The right to be forgiven. The right to ask for forgiveness. The right to, for praise to be answered. All of everything that you do is a right that is given by God based on grace. Based on the grace of God. And if you understand that, always in humility, you will stand in your right. But it will come from a place of humility. Because you will always be amazed at what Christ has done for you. And with that, you will give others grace. And from that place, you will give others grace because you respect what Christ has done for them also. They could leave you wrong. Like for real, or maybe according to perspective of people. Hello? But you have one right, and that is to forgive them. God give you one right. The opportunity to forgive. The opportunity to give grace. The opportunity to honor in spite of the facts of things done wrong. That's the only right you have on earth as a child of God. The other right is going to hell. <clears throat> that is the one that didn't accept Christ. Because rightfully, we turned our backs on Him. Rightfully, we did the wrong. So rightfully, we suppose, hello, to die. God said to Adam and Eve, if you, free, if you eat from this fruit, you will surely die. Die in one way. That one is death forever. But death has no hold on him. He overcame death. Amen. Amen. Through the blood of Christ. So in you is working 
the life that is from heaven, that overcome, that overcame death that was and is destructive. There is a death that worked for you that is gain, and that is the death of your flesh, the death of the rabbis who want to rule in you. Hello, life is Christ, dying is gain. Not just when you see him one day, but tomorrow. Dying of the flesh and the old opinion and the old thing and the old way of doing. It's gain. It's gain. Tomorrow you will profit. Your profit tomorrow is first of all the death of your flesh. This yes. it doesn't seem pleasant. It's not like the God says, push through. We want to encourage you. Push through. Because you will come into the lifestyle that is peace. That is coming natural. But more and more. The right thing to do is come natural. More and more. If you put yourself in this, you enjoy doing your work. And it's not a fight not to be lazy. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm not going to cheat in the exam. Every one or two did that in the past. But you know when you realize this is wrong and you put some discipline on your life, it just comes natural that you don't cheat anymore. Some manipulated to get certain stuff, maybe as a child or this, this, this. And you want it to become a lifestyle when you put that discipline on it. You don't do it. It's become, it's come, become a natural lifestyle not to manipulate or to lie or to steal. Certain stuff. But some of us who are under certain control. You agree with me? But now with everyone, we do everyone. There are certain things that we must put the discipline there and we have only peace. The righteousness is there's only peace if it becomes natural. Uh, are you with me? Because in the natural there is a peaceful fruit of set righteousness. Peaceful. There is no fight anymore. There is no fight in your head. There is no fight in your heart with somebody so easy anymore. Because you are established through discipline in righteousness. You have that? Ah, uh, no? Next one. Romans 12. Anybody with the Bible? Oh. Romans 12. It's good to mark this. The things that God is saying to you, to write it in your Bible. You spoke about that, remember? When you can write what God is saying, like in the, with this scripture, if you write like just two things there in your Bible that stood out for you, you know who's going to read it, your next generation. Because your Bible, your grandchild will say, wow. I got my, my grandfather's Bible. And the things that he wrote here, it's such so amazing. All the golden nuggets that you put there, that God walked the road with you. And your grandchild, I see how God used him, and I got how grandpa, how he walked with God. And it's not for the image of grandpa, it's so that his lifestyle, what you've written down, can speak to the next generation. I pray that you have that kind of Bible. If you don't want to write in the Bible, get another Bible also to write in Hebrew. In that Bible. Is that okay? Mm. Everyone is still here. You're alive? Right, praise the Lord. Romans 12, verse 11 says, Not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the law. Diligence is that I can push through. It's the same concept of what God is saying to us about discipline. Amen? Amen. Amen. Fervent in spirit. That your spirit is driving me. I can be fervent. I can be alive. There can be an energy. There can be a drive in my soul. If maybe you were angry or a drive actually to make you depressed or a drive just to give your own opinion, or a drive 
and that thing is driving you God says, no. Turn it in spirit. There's a constant drive from your spirit. And you stay constant to be driven by love, to be led by peace, with the joy of the Lord at your strength. Hello? To walk by faith, based on the hope that you have that is eternal. So God says you need to focus on that place because He has given you everything in Christ Jesus that's deposited in your spirit. He will not ask you to do something that you are not able to do. He enabled you to do what He asks of you to do. But He is making sure that you cannot do it without Him because He's jealous in His love for you. He wants you to do it with Him. That's His dream. When you're going to live the Father's dream for your life, it will always be with you. And it will always be with people. Hello. Yes. Because in God's dream is, I will be your God. No, I will be their God. And they will be my person. No, they will be my child. No, they will be my people. God's dream is about the people. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. God's going to help us all. Amen. Amen. We believe so in Jesus' name. And then serving the Lord. Why must he say, you must remember to serve the Lord. Who here, if I ask, who's serving the Lord and who's serving the devil? Ah, oh, come on. He's going to say, I'm serving the devil. Oh, no, the way says you must serve God. Why does he say, serve the Lord? Because we must learn how to practically serve the Lord. Serve the Lord is not just not with this, not with that. Jesus said, I was hungry. You feed me. I was in jail. You listen. I needed clothes. I was there. And at the end of the day, Jesus said, As you've done unto them, so you've done unto me. So serve the Lord is. I need to serve my brother and my sister, my church, my community, my family, in the Lord. And then, that's it. You serve me. Serve the Lord, and you will see how you serve others. I'm not talking about the spirit of slavery. I'm no longer slave. Sorry, you are. You are either the slave of yourself, the slave of your opinion, and that, then, you are, then you are misled because you think you are free. You can do what you want. You're a slave, but you are enslaved by something that will destroy you. Or you will become a slave of the word, where the word arrests you. Even though I want to, still I will. I will put the discipline, and it's hard, but I will allow, and I will walk in this way. Are you with me? The question is not if you will be a servant. The question is not if you will be a slave. The question is you will serve who, and you will be a slave of what? Because a slave of Christ, a slave of the word, will always set you free. A slave of your opinion, a slave of what you feel, a slave of your, your mindset will always destroy you. It will always put a curse on you. It will always bring the shame at the end of the day on you. It will always drain you and destroy the life that God has for you. There is nothing was left in Jesus' name. We are with one another. Amen. Serve the Lord, and you will see how you will find it as an honor to serve the body of Christ. And you do it as if unto the Lord, and you see it as an honor. Be free. May we walk in the truth and the freedom of Christ to be effective in the way that we serve God. Amen. Amen. Last one. Revelation 12, verse 11. And they will overcome. When we look at the book of Revelation, we see how Jesus is coming to his church. Standing, he's knocking at the door. He wants to speak to his church. First of all, for more and more into the end time. More and more when heaven and earth and everything will be shaken like never, 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 ever on earth. The first thing, Jesus wants to speak to his church. Jesus wants to speak to his church. And he comes and he says who he is. He's showing the church who he is. And then he says, this is good. Build on that. And then he says, this is wrong. Deal with that. 
but I must be able to have the capacity and the maturity to hear both. To be encouraged to build on that what is accurate in our lives. But also to understand that, like it was said in the 12 letters to the churches in Revelation, that the Father being disciplined because He loves you, because He loves you, because He triggers a child, because He loves you, therefore there is discipline. Hello? Build on what is right, what the Holy Spirit is showing you in your life for 2022. Right? But deal with that what is wrong. You cannot go into next year and just be encouraged by what is right in your life. But that what needs to change. That where you have the challenges. And how God to speak to you about those challenges. You cannot just ignore the lie. You need to face it in the name of the Lord with the revelation that's alive in you. You face your Goliath with the revelation that's alive in you. I come to you in the name of the Lord. I know my God. I have a revelation of who He is. And it's so much, so much, so much bigger than the revelation of the facts in front of me. You come to me with the facts, the spear, this, the that, as a, those big soldiers, Goliath. I come to you with truth. You come to me with facts. How do you? Oh. Bless you that over this December time, you will receive the revelation more and more of who He is, so that you will walk into the challenges that you will face for the rest of your life. And tell those facts. How do you come against the truth that's alive in me? Let's say. I'll speak to the facts and tell them how dare you come against the truth that's alive in me. Amen. The truth that's alive in me. Let the word, let the word dwell richly in you. Dwell is living in you. Amen. That's going to help us. So you will overcome. After he spoke to the churches, and then for the rest of Revelation, most of it is talking about the shaking, shaking of heaven and earth. But there's one that stands out. Those that will overcome through everything, through all of this, everything, everything. They will overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Those who know my salvation is in Him. Those who boast in the cross. You will overcome through the blood. Your victory is because you are quick to forgive. You are quick to give grace. You are quick to understand humility. You are quick to come in brokenness. You are you are you establish that lifestyle. That's the man that will overcome. More and more and more in the end time. More and more when nations and continents and the, and the world will be shaken by things that we already see. That's how you will overcome through the blood. And then from that place, and the word of their testimony, and understand the word of your testimony is not when you just testify about what happened in your life. When you give God the honor for what He has done in you, that is not just the word of, the test of your testimony. The word of your testimony is what you live by. My life is a testimony. That's how I'm supposed to live. Are you with me? The word of your testimony is the message that you are living. You are the living Bible for a lot of guys that will never, ever, ever, ever hear the gospel except through your lifestyle. And the testimony of your lifestyle, the testimony of how you speak to people, the testimony of how you relate, the testimony of how you serve, how you present yourself, that, for that testimony, you will overcome. You will overcome. Part of it, you will testify and give an honor to God for what happens in your life. But that's only one part of it. May God help you to live the testimony of Christ. When at the end of the day Jesus asked the disciples, give me the testimony, who am I? They say you are Elijah, they say that, they say that. 
Who do you say I am? Because based on that, I will build my church. The word of your testimony is, first of all, who you believe Christ is in your life. Let's say, who's the Christ in me? Who's the Christ in me? That's the word of your testimony that you will bring as an overcomer into every situation where you go. You already, you come with victory into Monday. You come with victory into the rest of yourself. You come with victory into into 2022. You come already with that victory if you understand how to live by the testimony, first of all, of who is. Who do you say I am? Peter says, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Based on that testimony, based on that revelation, based on that revelation that is not from yourself, but is from God, the Father in heaven. On that I will build my church. Other translation, now we talk business. I know. But there can be other, other demons that look at you and your heart becomes bitter and cold, and that demon says to one another, Now we can talk business. Because based on that, you can build something that will destroy that person and a lot of people around you. God is looking at if you will take the word under the guidance of the Spirit, and with that revelation, with all respect, God is saying, now we're talking business. Now can he do with you and you can do with him as co workers and establish that what will have eternal value. Part of that eternal value is also for the next generation and the next generation because of the impact of your life. May that be so in Jesus' name. They were overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of the testament, and they didn't love their lives even unto death. There's a life that you hate, you must hate, and that life you must see. There's a, a life that is now crucified with Christ, and there's a life that is hidden in Christ, where I, in, my life is in the resurrected Christ. Galatians 2.20, we are crucified with Christ. But there's a life that I find in Christ. My life is Hidden in Christ, I must through the Holy Spirit find it in Christ. That was too fast. That's what we want to do with one another. Help one another so that we will not live for ourselves. <laughs> so to disciple one another, to be accountable to one another, is to make sure that I don't live for myself. <laughs> Are you with me? So I'm seeing a leader, I'm seeing myself leader, I'm seeing my brother, and, and, and say, Please speak into my life that I will not live for myself. How does that sound? And that the life of Christ will be revealed to me. Paul says, with all the issues, all the issues going on in that church, he says, I want to know nothing about you. No, I just wanted to share my heart with the leader. I just want to open up my heart. I just want to share what's happening, to sort it out. Paul, I don't know. But it's not just out of frustration that he takes hold of the truth. He says, I want to know nothing among you. Stop this nonsense. Stop all these other stuff. We don't need to go into all the detail of all the issues of all the death or all the that. I want to know one thing among you that is Christ and Him crucified. I want to know how you die in Christ. And I want to know how you live in Christ. I want to know how death is working in you through the cross. And I want to know how Christ is working in you through you, through the resurrected Christ. Amen. Oh my brother, my sister, now you understand that principle for life. That's the way that you were overcome. That you didn't even love your life into death. Because what can death do to you? He will just grow from glory to glory. Tomorrow, the death of your flesh, from glory to glory. In that day, when you go through to heaven, from glory to glory. Everybody say, glory to glory, glory, glory. to glory. Through death. Yes. That will work for me. Don't work to escape death. Don't try to survive in life. 
and work against death. Let death work for you.